Hello everybody. So today, what is my top tip going to be about? So we're going to talk about hellebores. Now they're obviously in season, kind of like they're a winter flower and like definitely into spring, you'll still be able to get them. The nickname for them possibly would be called the Christmas Rose. That's more because they're available like in the winter time. And the meaning behind them, because lots of flowers have meaning, is they relieve my anxiety. So if anybody has anxiety, or maybe you want to give a gift to flowers to somebody who you know is suffering from anxiety, this would be the flower to give them. Now the variety of the ones that I have here are called double white elms. So they're actually double petals. They're absolutely amazing. Now they haven't been hydrated yet, but I want to give you a couple of little tips about them. I'm planning on using these in kind of wedding bouquets and I feel that they're going to give me lots of movement because there's lots of bends you see in them. Now what happens is they are inclined to curve towards the light. A bit like tulips. Do you ever have tulips in a vase of water? And the sun is shining in the window and then all your tulips then curve towards the light. Well the Helleborus does exactly the same. So often when you take them out of the box the heads are kind of quite bent or curved on them. You know that way? And if you place them in a vase of water against the light, you know what I mean? It'll straighten them up because they'll obviously then try and curve towards the light again. They're not the best long-lasting flower. You rough, roughly get between five and seven days out of them. And that's more in a cooler room than a warm room. So again, if you're trying to prolong the life of them, keep them in a cooler room. They are available like November to May, but as I said, kind of like December to April probably would be the peak time for them. I have the white ones here today, but they do come in other colours. I suppose the whites and the greens would be the more popular ones, but often people growing them in their garden, you'll see they'll have the mauve and the burgundy shades. They love a temperature of anything between 3 and 5 degrees Celsius. So how do you condition them? So with old flowers, the first thing that you do is you remove the plastic from the flowers, okay? That allows any ethylene gas to escape. You cut approximately one inch or between one and two centimetres off the end of the flowers. Now you will find that they um, drink an awful lot of water. So you may kind of find that you have to kind of like top up the vase kind of like quite regular. But when I cut them first, what I do is I place them into a deep vase of water and I keep the water slightly tepid. So I don't put them into ice cold water. So I just put a bit of boiling water into my vase of cold water Fill it about, say, two-thirds up the stem. I remove any foliage that will be below the water line. So they like to be in a deep vase of water. And I would give them approximately six to eight hours in water before I would use them. And I would recut them every day because, again, every time you cut a flower, it immediately sucks up water. And these will dehydrate very fast. And like the problem is people will come back to you and say, God, they died, you know what I mean, within a day or two. So you do need to tell your customer, you have to cut them every day. And cut approximately one, two centimeters off the end of them. Cut them on a 45 degree angle, because when you cut on an angle, you open up a bigger hole than if you cut straight across. So again, it's easy for them to drink up water. Now, the next thing I'm gonna say might frighten some of you, but like, don't be too afraid, okay? But the stem itself can be a poisonous stem. Now, I find personally, I don't react to them at all, but some of you may. So you might find if you're working in a flower shop, you may have to wear, you know, them disposable kind of plastic gloves. So sometimes when you're making a hand tied bouquet out of them and when you're tying your twine around them and if the stem kind of gets a little bit kind of like, you know, cracked or whatever and there's a little bit of secretion, again, you could find that your hands will be kind of react to them. So it's really important when you do handle any of the Helleborus is to make sure that you wash your hands quite regular. They're brilliant, ideal for winter and spring weddings. Because they have a hollow stem, they're not an ideal flower arrangement flower as in to use in floral foam. But if you were to use them in a foam-free arrangement, maybe like using chicken wire or even in a vase of water, again, you will find that you will get a longer life out of them. Hopefully you've picked up a couple of tips and hints there. Remember, if you have any questions at all, post all your questions in the comments below. We, did, we will definitely respond back to everyone. Hopefully you picked up a couple of tips and hopefully you enjoyed it. I'd love if you shared this video as well. My name is Jeanette and I'm from Case Flare School.